It's another intro into another Joshi Wrestling promotion. I plan on doing these for a bunch of different ones as time goes on, one by one, and just kind of give my opinions as a new fan of the promotion, whether I liked it, whether I didn't, how it compares to the ones that I'm already watching. This time I chose Ice Ribbon. And the reason why I chose Ice Ribbon this time is because one of their main wrestlers actually won the Joshi Award for the Tokyo Sports Awards last year in 2018. Her name is Tsukasa Fujimoto. And to win that award, they have to be pretty good, or at least the promotion they're from has to be at least worth, you know, going to see. So I decided my next one to branch off into is Ice Ribbon. And right off the bat, I'm just going to say I, I like it a lot. Uh, there are a lot of diff differences between the promotions I'm watching now and some really annoying aspects of it. But overall, the promotion itself is pretty good. Now let's go into even more detail. I watched the last six shows available of Ice Ribbon at the time of writing this script. And... I say available because not all of these shows are actually easily accessible by most people. I'll explain that a lot later in the production part of the thing, because I'm going to be splitting this video up into three parts. Notable wrestlers, production, and comparison with the other promotions I watch, stardom in Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. Let's get to it. After watching all six shows, and trying not to form a complete opinion on any of the wrestlers until I was done with all of them. There were a total of four that were actually from Ice Ribbon that caught my attention. There were a couple that weren't from Ice Ribbon that are either freelancers or from another promotion that actually caught my attention as well. But I'm only going to be talking about the ones that Ice Ribbon can claim. Ironically, one of the four is not Tsukasa Fujimoto. The chick that actually got me to try to watch Ice Ribbon. After the six shows I watched with her, she is, at the very least, good. Um, I, I wasn't really that impressed with her. Maybe I just had too high hopes going in. Like, she's a really great wrestler, and I love watching her matches, but nothing about her really caught my eye or made me feel like she deserved winning the 2018 Joshi Award. Maybe she just had a really great uh, title run in 2018 that I just didn't see. So I'm not going to be judging her on that. Um, just what I saw and what I saw, she didn't make the cut for the four that caught my attention. Now let's get to the first one. The first one I would like to mention is Kiri. Uh, she caught my attention right away because she did not look like someone that I was going to like. There were a lot of things that seemed like she wasn't going to step up to the plate. One, she looks extremely young and like cute innocent, you know, like adorable. And it didn't look like she could ever be a real threat. Two, uh, her main color is green and I absolutely hate the color green. So she had two things going against her, but she won me over in the first match I saw from her. She was absolutely awesome in it. She was barbaric. She was very vicious and uh, hard-hitting, very stiff, and it caught me off guard because it's a complete conflict with her appearance. She she looks like this cute, innocent, fairy-type person, and yet she's straight up kicking someone over and over in the head while they're in the ropes. It was absolutely barbaric, and I loved it. Since then, out of all the shows that I watched, my opinion has not changed. Uh, right now, she is one half of the tag team champions with another person that actually caught my attention, but not enough to really mention. I really liked her, but she's not one of the four that really caught my attention. Her new outfit is pretty good in my opinion. It's, it's just kind of like a schoolgirl outfit. She matches with her partner. It's pretty good. It's, it's nothing to really write home about, but it's nothing to hate either. So, on to the next wrestler. The next person I want to talk about is now, and I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, it's either Date or Date. I'm assuming it's Date just because, I don't know, um, it's spelled D-A-T-E, but it's all capitalized every time. So anyway, this 
wrestler right here caught my attention right away from her appearance and appearance alone. Her outfit looks sick. It's like a martial arts samurai mix type thing. Maybe not samurai, but she looks super awesome. So right away, I was completely on her side in the match. I believe the first match I saw of hers was a tag match. And right away, I wanted to like her more than anybody else in the match. I was like, wow, this is really cool. As the match went on, I actually got some justification for my liking of her because she is a really great wrestler. Being so new to wrestling, she is only about one year in in experience, but she has a history in MMA. She's a legit MMA fighter. She's a part of the Date or Date group. They're this group of MMA fighters, and four of them came over to join Ice Ribbon, and she's one of them. I have a feeling this is another Maho Krone experience where I found a wrestler that I really liked, they became my favorite from the promotion, and then I found out that they're retired because she hasn't been seen since that first match, and that was months ago. It was like October of last year or something like that. So I really hope she comes back because she was one of the top people I, I liked from my little excursion into Ice Ribbon. Next is Tsukushi. This chick is absolutely fire. She is super short, super high energy, and an absolute beast. The first time I saw her, the only thing I could think of was she reminded me of a mini Monami Toyota. And if you guys don't know who Monami Toyota is, she's a legend in the Joshi world. The um, widely considered one of the best wrestlers of all time, male or female. She's absolutely insane. So for me to say that this chick reminded me of a small Monami Toyota, that's some high praise. She felt very similar to her. She was very fast-paced. She she would like hit a move and be up before the other person can even like hit the mat sometimes. And that's what Monami used to do, it was very high intensity. And that's why she was so amazing. After doing some research, I found out that one of her trainers is actually Monami. So that's cool. I I kinda guess that. I guess I'm not really that far off on describing her that way. The only downside is that she has been wrestling for about eight years now. And she doesn't look like she's anywhere above the mid card. So if she is going to be wrestling for a while longer, I don't think her spot is going to rise. Which is a real shame to me, especially since she's one of the four that I really liked. But, you know, we'll see. The next is the Snow Queen Maya Yukihi. She captivated me from the very beginning. Everything about her just screamed royalty. She was... She came out, she just looked like a queen. Like I, I didn't even find out until later that her nickname was the Snow Queen or something like that. But that's how I originally described her, it was like she was a queen. She had this feeling towards her when she was walking out in the ring or standing in the ring that she was kind of above everyone else. The one thing I thought about her right away before I knew anything about her was that she was a top star. I didn't know if that was going to be true or not. At the time, I didn't even know if she was signed to Ice Ribbon or not. I didn't know anything about her. I just knew that she was a top star, either there, somewhere else, or as a freelancer. And later on, in one of the other shows, she ended up getting the main belt. So I'm not even that wrong. Uh, she really is a top star. But that was just from her appearance. How did I feel when she started wrestling? She drew me in even more, because her wrestling style is exactly what I like. Since getting into Joshi Wrestling, I've discovered that the style that I like more than any other style is the striker style. If you look at some of my favorite wrestlers, it kind of makes sense. Um, Asuka, I know that she's not a pure striker. She's a, like she, she's more of a technical like Konami, but um, she, she is known for her strikes. Uh, you know, Asuka, uh, and then Momo Watanabe. I really took a liking to Orisa Hoshiki as soon as she came in. I've been a huge fan of Tam from the very beginning because of her strikes. I just really love strikers. And when I saw that Maya, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from the six shows that I watched of her in them, she is primarily a striker. She, like most of her moves are her kicking the other person. 
like really hard. So out of everyone that I talked about, she was the one person that I liked more than the other ones. The only one that really came close to her was now, but uh, I've kind of distanced myself away from trying to like now, just because I have a feeling she's not going to be there anymore. And I would hate to invest myself in someone like I did with Maho Korone and Azusa Takikawa, Takigawa, Takigawi, no. Azusa Takigawa. I would, uh, those two I, I kind of gravitated towards when I first started watching Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. And both of them retired. Like, Maho was already retired by the time that um, I had actually discovered the promotion. And Azusa retired like, like a month later or something. So I'm really hoping that these two stick around. I'm trying not to put any, you know, bets behind now. So I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on uh, Maya and then probably uh, Kitty. Just because I feel like Kitty has more of a... She hasn't reached her peak yet, like Tsukasa, Tsukushi, Tsukushi, Tsukushi. Yeah, uh, sorry, I... I don't really know them that much. Uh, I don't talk about them nearly as often as I do with the Stardom Chicks, so I don't know their names right off the bat. So yeah, the two that I'm I'm going to back the most from this promotion, if I had to recommend two wrestlers from this promotion that I would I want other people to see, it would be Maya Yukihi and Kitty. Now let's talk about the production of the promotion. This is going to involve anything that has nothing to do with the wrestlers and yeah, pretty much everything that doesn't have to do with the wrestlers. There is one aspect of their pro production that annoys me more than anything anything I've ever been annoyed about about Stardom or Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling and that is there is no way from what I could find someone in the U.S. to actually watch their promotion. I was I, I was online, I found their website, they stream on Nico Video, I was ready to give money to them each month, become a subscriber. All of their videos are region blocked. I couldn't see a single one. I tried VPNs, I tried proxy sites. Nothing worked. Nothing. I, I couldn't get them to show me <laughs> video for money so unfortunately the only way to really watch their promotion at least in the u.s is through means of people uploading the videos under the table i guess would be the expression i don't know it's late now let's move on to the actual video quality and production of the shows because they stream on niku video and i believe this is a common thing for that site a lot of the times they'll have the match running, but then in the corner, like right over here, I'll try to put a box here uh, during editing to kind of show you how much of the screen it kind of takes up. Or I'll just show you a clip of one of their matches. Probably not a clip, because I don't know how strike heavy they are, like Stardom is. Um, until told otherwise by the company themselves, I am not going to risk getting any more strikes or videos taken down from my, my channel until I get to go ahead to use video clips from any of the promotions, which probably isn't going to happen, so sorry. Anyway, yeah, like I was saying, they have this box in the corner that takes up a decent amount of the screen, and it actually is really annoying. All that's in the box is the two commentators of the t at the time. Um, sometimes three commentators, or just one for a little bit, and then someone else will come in. It's the ring announcer, who is super cute. And then usually a wrestler um, as a guest. And they are just the commentators of the show. But they show themselves the entire time. I don't understand why. I've noticed this with a lot of other Japanese things. It seems to be a very common Japanese um, video shooting style. When people are commentating over videos, I don't get it. Last annoying thing is something that doesn't even matter because 
I don't feel like it's a proper annoyance. It, it's just that there there's no subtitles. It's all in Japanese. And I'm only bringing it up because it's annoying, you know, as a foreign viewer. But I'm not counting it against it. It, it does hinder my... Of, ability to actually enjoy the promotion but I'm not gonna hold it against the promotion because it's a Japanese company making a Japanese product for Japanese people to the point where they don't even let people from outside of Japan watch it if they want to so you know like how can I get mad it, it's it's not it's not like they promised to be available to foreigners in some way you know so it's just something that I had to bring up for people who are trying to look to get into watching it. It's not going to be subtitled. It's You're going to be just as lost and confused for most of the storylines as Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. The only difference is Tokyo Joshi actually has a dude who live translates the shows on Twitter or something. Other than that, really not much of a difference. Alright, now we're moving on to the comparison part of the video. And this is going to be where I probably tick off a lot of people. But what I'm going to be doing, and as this series goes on, it's going to be longer because there's going to be more and more comparisons. I'm going to be comparing this product to the other two that I have already talked about. Stardom and Tokyo Joshi. First thing I want to talk about is the quality of wrestlers. Now what I mean the quality of wrestlers isn't... I guess it is. What I mean by quality of wrestlers is how good on average the wrestlers are. If there are only like three or two really awesome wrestlers and the rest are just, just suck, then overall the quality of wrestlers is bad. But if everyone is just average, then that could be argued to be just as bad. So, in the order that I place them is number one for quality of wrestlers is stardom. Still, there isn't another promotion that I have found yet Obviously, I only have these three to compare by, so don't don't be writing in the comments like, Oh my god, you don't know anything. Oz Academy has the best ever. I get it. I will get to other promotions eventually. Right now, it's just between these three. In between these three, Stardom has a much better quality of wrestlers. There is better quality on average. Um, their top people in Stardom are just as good as the top people from the other two promotions, if not better for some in some instances. The number of top wrestlers is larger in stardom than there is in the other promotions. They have a much larger roster than mo the other two, meaning they can put on better matches that you don't see all the time. Number two is going to Ice Ribbon. Now, Ice Ribbon actually has a number of really good wrestlers. A couple of great wrestlers, you know. I would say it's about like 50-50. Eh, no, probably more like 25-75. Is that there's, they have like a quarter of the wrestlers are just like really good wrestlers that you love seeing. They're really great. They can put on amazing matches. And 75 of them either put on okay matches or bad matches. That completely blows Tokyo Joshi out of the water though. I like Tokyo Joshi, but they have a very big power shift. You have the top, top people, and then you have the rest of the promotion, which is like 80% of the promotion, 80 to 90% of the promotion is just nowhere near good. Mostly just because they're all like rookies and whatnot, but the, the top in Tokyo Joshi are really great, but they're few and far between. There's only like three of them that I could even consider being like top of the card level of wrestler so that's the that's the order stardom ice ribbon tokyo joshi now let's move on to the aspect of entertaining shows how entertaining on average are their shows and for this one it's going to be the same thing stardom ice ribbon then tokyo joshi Stardom has the advantage of being subtitled, so I know what the characters are saying, I know what the characters' motivations are, why they did stuff, who they are. With the other promotions, I don't get any of that, so I'm, I can purely just base it off of how good the matches are. And, like I said, the quality of wrestlers isn't that great, 
on average. So the whole show isn't nearly as entertaining as Stardom is. They could put on a much better show wrestling-wise, but Stardom would still beat them because of things like knowing that Samire is calling, you know, Azumi a brat or Kagetsu, you know, talking complete nonsense after a match. It adds so much to the whole package of the the show that they are just miles above. Like, honestly, it's at the point where Stardom is, like, way up here in terms of entertainment shows. And then Ice Ribbon's, like, here. And then Tokyo's, like, here. Now, the reason why Tokyo is much lower than Ice Ribbon is because Ice Ribbon has better quality wrestlers, so they can put on more entertaining matches. That's it. I can't base them off of storylines or anything like that. So... There it is. The title of this video is, Is Ice Ribbon Good? And to summarize this whole video into one word, the answer of that would be yes. I found it very, very good. It is very entertaining. I, I am going to keep watching it, essentially. I'm not going to drop it. Uh, I will probably watch it more than I do Tokyo Joshi, just because... There's no way to actually pay for it, so it's just free and there, and I'll just grab it, you know, and watch it, you know. I just wish the promotion was a lot more accessible, because I would gladly pay a certain, you know, money each month to, to watch that promotion. It, it's, it has some really good upsides to it. Ice Ribbon is a promotion that I would highly recommend to everyone to at least check out once. I can almost guarantee that after watching at least one show, you're going to find a wrestler that you connect with. They, even they're bad, and this is just my opinion, bad, it doesn't mean they're actually bad wrestlers, it just means wrestlers that I had no connection to, or it could mean that they're actually bad wrestlers, but even their bad wrestlers have some good aspects to it. I mean, the rookies are very enjoyable to watch, and you know, just like Stardom, uh, it's, and now Tokyo, because Tokyo Joshi has a lot of new rookies, I mean... One of the fun aspects of Joshi is watching these women progress and, you know, get better. So yeah, watch at least one show. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure a lot of you guys already have watched it or watched it regularly. If there are some people that I didn't mention in this video that you wanted me to, well, I'm sorry, but I didn't want to mention any freelancers. I wanted this to be about Ice Ribbon, just Ice Ribbon. Um, there are some freelancers that were really good, like... Uh, Hikaru Shida, I believe her name is, she, well, she didn't really connect with me in any way, I didn't really like her that much, uh, I can tell that she's very talented, and I can understand why some people really like her, she's pretty good, like, I, I don't not look forward to her matches, I think they're, like, when they're on the card and Ice Ribbon, I look forward to it, just not anything that I would get too crazy about, maybe one day I'll make a video specifically for the top freelancers and just give my opinion on all of them. Like I said, I only wanted this video to be about Ice Ribbon. And there you go. Is Ice Ribbon good? Yes.